So my 2013 Scion FRS needs a wheel bearing. One of the challenges I have noticed with wheel bearings, and this might be unique to my hearing problem, is I'm never really sure if it's the left or the right. I can usually tell front or rear, but left or right is, is, is a challenge for me. Um, I'm partially deaf, uh, left ear is much more deaf than the right, 35% deaf overall, and uh, echolocation is difficult because I hear most of what I hear through my right ear. Um, following on the heels of that, I've decided it's the right uh, wheel bearing that's bad. Maybe that's on me, we'll see. But anyway, so well, how did I come to the conclusion it's a wheel bearing? Well, it's going down the road and the best way I could describe the noise is it kind of reminds me of, of a scene from Lord of the Rings when the um, dwarves start humming and they do this kind of deep hum, but it's kind of polyharmonic. It's like, um, and then you get that um, slightly different. That's the polyharmonic hum. And so I was hearing that. I, I've had four of these 86s FRS BRZs, and I know them pretty well. I knew there was an abnormal sound. Uh, and then when, you, when I swerve the car right to left, it makes it louder or quieter. And that's usually a really good indicator that your wheel bearing's bad. So um, that being said, I decided to go ahead and just change the wheel bearings. This thing was used for racing uh, on the track, uh, and it's only got 79,000 miles on it. But when you're track racing and you're using a really wide width tire, this had a 245 series tire on it, it's harder on your wheel bearings. So even at 80,000, this wheel banger may be done. So this is a brand new OEM wheel bearing. Um, I got this from uh, a website, Toyota South. They've been really good to me. Um, I actually got two of these wheel bearings shipped for 208 bucks. I couldn't even get uh, aftermarket ones on Rock Auto for under 250. So uh, now they, they have really good prices to begin with. They have like a 20% discount and then free shipping. I, have keep, I just keep ordering from these guys. But anyway, um, I went ahead and ordered both of them just in case it's the other side. If this one's bad, the other one's probably going. Um, if this doesn't fix it, then I'll change the other side. But I've got options now that I've got both wheel bearings. So I'm gonna jump into the teardown. I'll explain how to do it. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will. And there's other videos out there about it, but uh, I'm gonna post my own just in case there's some other tips or tricks that you guys find helpful. So we'll, we'll jump right in. So kind of the sequence of actions that we'll be going through is the caliper and the caliper bracket have to come off and then the rotor has to come off. Once you've got those off, then there's four bolts in the rear that hold this whole hub on. So that's what I'll be doing and kind of follow along. I'm gonna run this in fast forward so you don't have to sit there and uh, watch it in real time. One thing I forgot to mention, make sure you take off the wheel speed sensor because when you go to pull the wheel bearing out, you're gonna damage the sensor if you don't pull it out first. So just make sure to do that before you pull the wheel bearing. One of the things that's important is before you put it back together is to get this clean. So what I, I got this uh, teal brush rag. I do like to use some uh, scotch Brite to kind of clean it up in the end. And then um, I'm actually gonna coat it with some anti-seize before I put the new one back in. Just to make sure the neck guy that's gotta work on this thing doesn't have to fight.
So the manual says the four bolts to hold the wheel bearing on should be torqued to 48 foot pounds. So got my torque wrench here and then the sensor here is torqued to 66 inch pounds, which is a little bit over five foot pounds. So make sure you make that switch because that bolt is really small. It doesn't take much torquing and it'll break off. And there's a whole lot of hurt going on if that happens. So 66 inch pounds. So there you have it. Um, the old bearing, usually what you can do is you can kind of turn it and you'll feel a little kind of clicking or grittiness, um, any kind of unevenness. And yeah, this actually does have a little, it's got a little rumble. I can feel it even now. Um, so yeah, that was the issue. Got it changed out. Um, so these are actually ARP lock nuts. Um, I'm not too worried about uh, this wheel bearing, but I think I will pull these ARP lug nuts off, lug studs, I said nuts, studs, um, and save those. Eventually, maybe I'll put them on here, but since I'm not racing, I probably, I really don't need them, but I don't want to throw them away either. So there you have it, front wheel bearing replaced. I think it took about, took about an hour, um, all told, and including trying to make sure you got a good video of it. Um, it is very helpful to have a, um, have this impact i wouldn't even I, the pneumatic impact doesn't even come close honestly the only downside of this thing is it's bulky and it's heavy um there was there was one bolt that was easier for me to get to without the impact um and that was this uh rearward upper one um i ended up just using a ratchet for that um and the other thing that really helped make this go quickly is i had already had this rotor off so it wasn't seized to the hub plate the bearing plate if you do need to get it off, um, there's a, I think it's an M10 by 1.0. Anyway, that bolt, you thread it in here, it pushes against the bearing plate. It'll make the rotor come off very easily. Um, but I had lubricated it uh, last time I put it on, so I was able to just pull it right off. Um, and the other thing is this car has not seen any winners, so it's not that rusty. Um, at least it doesn't appear to have seen any winners. Um, pretty pretty rust-free. That really greatly helps uh, these kinds of jobs. But again, about an hour. Um, that's also being on a lift at chest height also makes it a lot easier. So I would say laying on the ground, uh, maybe without all these great tools, at least double that time, probably two hours, maybe two and a half. Um, just depends on your, your tool set and your experience and how rusty this thing is. So anyway, that's the front wheel bearing. Hope it helps somebody out. Uh, the next job is I'm gonna re be replacing this fender liner. Um, the car was lowered and the tire ate through the fender liner. And so I'm gonna be replacing that. And uh, actually the bumper is uh, goofed up as well. So that's the next job and I'll be doing a video about that.